This is The Wheel Weaves, a Wheel of Time podcast with no spoilers. Hey everyone, I'm your host, Annie, and I'm the first time reader going through this series chapter by chapter. As always, there's no spoilers past the chapter we're covering, and that means it's totally safe for first time readers. I'm joined by my co host, Brett, who's a longtime fan, and he's guiding me on this journey. We'd like to thank and acknowledge our executive producers Brandy Nairn Kirkwood, Sean McGuire, Yanis, Light Blinded Fool, Green Man, Davis Ferreira, Margaret, Big C, Bennett Williamson, Dylan C., Hannah Green, Neuralia, Jordan Gower, and Jeff Searles. And before we get into things today, we have a new producer level patron to welcome to our team. So we want to say thank you so much to Gabby Young. Gabby joins the ranks of Passion Socks, Cody Fouts, Benjamin, Michelle O'Brien, Jamie Young, Megan Smiley, Jared Berg, Ricky Morissette, Lance Barden, Charlie Haz, Adam, Marta Thier, Michelle Forbes, MKM, Antoine Benoit, Lawrence Bradley, Eric Reed, and Colby T. Thank you so much for your generous support. We really, truly appreciate it and could not do this without you. In this episode, we're talking about chapter 29 of Knife of Dreams. Yeah, chapter 29 is The Last Knot. I know. Oh we're my here. Goodness. Okay. I love it. Yeah. And happy Halloween. Yes, it is actually Halloween it right is now. It's actually Halloween. We ran out of candy. We turned off our lights. Yep. And here we are. Start shouting at kids through the door. Get out of here. <laughs> Get off my lawn! Exactly. That's what I say on Halloween to children <laughs> all the time. Yeah. Now, before we get into things, it yeah. looks, you have a, you have a, okay. I got a big box. Yes, I do. Okay. I got a big box. How about you? <laughs> I don't think you know what you're saying. <laughs> yeah. Okay. What I really do have is some mail. Right. Yeah. Right. Mm-hmm. Now, and we have to do an unboxing. For the record, we are, so we don't know what it is. We're supposed to open it. Yeah. I'm going to open it really carefully. I better not be snakes that jump out at me. But like know? I read the description on the box. You know, I was informed that the description was wrong. So I'm like oh, it's excited a fake description. and also terrified. Ooh, mail fraud. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> so it's not a um, uh, model horse. It's not model is horses. what you're saying. No, it is absolutely not model horses. But... I hope it's not those springy snakes that jump out at me. So I'm going to open this very cautiously. Or like a live snake. Yeah. Oh, also, I, yeah. That would also I don't know be if that would get past the post office. Maybe. All right. So okay. we have a note right on top addressed to us. So this is from Sarah. And as a token of her appreciation, please enjoy these delights from the great state of Michigan. Okay. Okay. It's a nice fall treat, apparently. So let's see. Oh, my goodness. It might be snakes. Like I, I know. I... <laughs> okay. So right away, I'm seeing packing peanuts and a lot of bubble wrap. Okay. We have to hide the packing peanuts from the kids. Oh, Those get everywhere. Oh, this will immediately go into the garage here's one. Ooh, Something okay i, found I get in to here. open one you can open that one nice what is it it's a shot glass okay i got a shot glass here too grand rapids okay michigan i got the great lakes oh oh good. nice like michigan yeah is one of those well that makes sense right like that's why it's called lake michigan yeah and then do you know the acronym to remember them all no Soggy hot dogs no, make that's everyone. The direction. That's the cardinal directions. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'm just trying to. I, I got nothing. What do you know? Superman helps everyone. Oh, okay. Okay. That's pretty good. I yeah. like that. All right. This is a very nice shot glass. Yeah. Okay. And there is something else in here. Okay. This is the treat. Oh. Mm hmm. Okay. Okay. So it is. Oh, Whoa. Wow. Yeah. Okay. So in the note, it specifically says, don't tell the Mounties. How you got it. Oh, nice. Okay. What because it... it is definitely an alcoholic beverage. Yeah. <laughs> sent in the mail. <laughs> not supposed to do that, right? I don't know. Maybe. Why maybe. Not? I don't know. Okay. I don't know the rules. It's a model horse. I claim ignorance. Okay. What type of... Just show me. Oh, like yeah. I see apple you. pie infused vodka. Oh, my goodness. Okay. Well, we well, have to... Apple pie flavored bo- vodka. Vodka infused with apple cider and cinnamon. I need to have some of that. Yeah. We need to have it. I feel like after our Halloween... With the kids and my Halloween as a teacher. Oh, yeah. Today. That's fair. I definitely could use a shot. So let's get these set up. Okay. I got to clean all this up. I'm actually going to rummage around in that box and make sure we didn't miss anything. Fair. Yeah. Let me open (laughs) that then. Okay. Sounds good. Okay. All set up. What a lovely gift. Thanks so much, Sarah. Yeah. Thank you. Cheers. Cheers. (laughs) <laughs> oh. That's smooth. <laughs> oh. Uh, yeah. See, we're used to whiskey and that's, that's vodka. That's vodka for oh, you. Oh, man. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> You're not doing... You okay? Mm-hmm. Can we continue? 
I bet that would be very tasty in a cocktail. Oh, yeah. That's mm. true. That's true. Yeah. Okay. I'm, not, I'm just such a baby. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, anything that's not like the blackberry whiskey that you're used to now. And even that. You're barely. Like, I barely can <laughs> Barely okay with it? Mm. Okay. Can I jump into a fun fact and then can we begin this please, excellent episode? Please, let's do. Okay, so this one. I have a little bit of a fun fact, and I'm going to make an argument for- No. Okay, here we go. What? So, in this chapter, we get to hear some, and we've heard it before, but the Aiel battle song, the Wash the Spears song. Oh, we have heard that before, yeah. Yeah, and it's Wash the Spears while the sun climbs high, Wash the Spears while the sun falls low, Wash the Spears who fears to die, Wash the Spears, no one I know. Ooh, okay. Now, what we learn is that the Aiel are singing it in parts. Okay. Now- This is what I've been able to understand because, for the record, I do need to brush up a little bit on my music theory, but... Man, you're really about the songs lately, hey? I mean, there's a lot of good stuff here. So songs like Row, Row, Row Your Boat are common examples of singing in a round, which means you have multiple people singing, right? And when you finish one line, the next person can start singing from the beginning. So basically, you Mm -hmm. stagger it, and then you can continue it forever, but you do technically need a minimum of three people singing it for it to be considered a round. Interesting. For the record. And I say interesting super loosely right now. Sure, sure. Yeah. Now, round singing is actually a form of singing in parts. And part singing, which is what the Aiel are doing here, actually means that the song is written or arranged for several different vocal parts. Most commonly, S-A-T-B, choir. And that stands for soprano, alto, tenor, and bass. Ooh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. So they can also be arranged for all male or all female ensembles. So I think what some of the maybe confusion is that it's not necessarily being sung in rounds where it's like one line, then someone else picks it up. It's actually the vocals of what's the big differentiating factor here. Now, I looked at the history of the songs and the type of music, and here's where some of the argument comes in. So the part song or part singing was created in Great Britain, which grew out of the madrigal tradition, which side note is also funny because of Encanto. Yeah. And it grew out a form of glee singing. So this was between like 16 and 1800. Now, if anyone wants to hit me up with like music theory and correct me on anything, that'd be great so I can get some clarification on this. But here's the argument. And I'm going to make the argument in four parts because it sounds pretty nicely fitting because four parts. So number one, singing in parts was established in Great Britain. Number two, the Aiel are reminiscent of Scottish and Irish people and Scotland is part of Great Britain. And the Aiel sing their war songs in parts and also likely in rounds. Now, part three, singing in parts and rounds is also very common in a very specific form of Irish tunes. Can you guess? Nope. It's pretty popular or was pretty popular on TikTok. On TikTok? Sea shanties. Oh, I'm not on that side of TikTok. Okay, I've seen Mm-mm. them. I've seen Mm-mm. them. Nope. Anyways, now part four, <laughs> the <Sea> Aiel. <laughs> well, I mean, that that's a thing. No, so the Aiel don't, <laughs> the Aiel don't very much care for the sea, but they do come from the waste. So my conclusion is I would like to propose that we don't call the Aiel war songs sea shanties, but I do want to call them sand shanties. Okay, sure. <laughs> yeah, that's your music theory for today. <laughs> okay, sounds good. All right, so we're going to get into this, but I feel like I have a few things I need to even correct myself on. Okay. I almost wanted to put an amendment in the last episode because at the end of it, I was like, no, nah, I'm pretty sure all these things about Galena... And I'm pretty sure everything I said was like pretty wrong. Yeah. And not just because it's a bad prediction, but because I didn't (laughs) quite understand or read it properly. Okay. So I did go back and I listened to the Galena perspective at the end of last chapter. Okay. Again. Okay. And I immediately was like, oh. Right. It's very clear she didn't channel. And it's very clear that she didn't try to kill Tharava. Yeah. And I also think it's pretty clear that her oath to Savannah has not been broken, or Savannah and Tharava. Yeah. Because yeah. she says something along the lines of, she's so happy that Tharava never forbade her from riding so that she can get the F out of here. Yeah. And if she had broken her it oath already, yeah. then it wouldn't matter at all. Right. Yeah. But she specifically thinks that. And I was like, oh, right away. This is even before <laughs> I started 
yeah. the next chapter. Yeah. And I was like, oh, everything I just talked about yesterday was like the most wrong thing <laughs> okay. I feel like I've ever said. You know what happens every once in a so while. So I just felt like I needed to throw that correction in okay. that I did understand it even before I started reading this chapter. Fair. I'll give you credit for that then. Okay. So this chapter is chapter 29, The Last Knot, which I think is pretty preemptive. This is rather reminiscent of Aleandra smiling because it's escape day. It's escape day. We're so yeah, happy. I and kinda, it's like, yeah. whoa, counting our chickens. I agree. I agree. I took it more as in like Perrin has decided to, that today is the day he either gets Fael back or he dies trying. Uh, like he's either one way or the other. He's either dead. Or he's getting file back. Like, he's not going to Which is stop. also super preemptive. I mean, I, you're not wrong. Yeah. You're not wrong. Like, it's absolutely <laughs> correct. Okay. He's Chapter <laughs> symbol is the wolf. Makes sense. Yeah. So, we're in Perrin's perspective, and Perrin is standing along the ridge line in the wall of fog, yeah. which, by the way, encircles the entire encampment. So we talked last time about how Galena wasn't going to ride into the fog because that was to the east or west or something like that. She was going to ride the other direction. But here we get clarification that it is on all sides. Yeah. And there's another army also on the other side. Yeah. So Granted, it's Masimas, but. Yeah, that's true. But there is a little bit of like time distortion here where we don't really have a clear timestamp of. Did, was the fog spreading a little bit? How long, like, how long ago was Galena where she was at the town gate? Like, we don't have all the answers necessarily, but also I would probably not ride straight out <laughs> of the town. Right. I would go off to the side. If, if I was Galena, that's what, what I would do. What do you mean do. go off to the side? You know, if you leave the town, the fog straight, I would go to the left. Maybe they're right. But there's fog everywhere. Yeah, but like of the town. If I was attacking, like attacking at all, it's fine. It doesn't matter. Okay. I'm just saying, yeah. I think it's going to be trickier for her to get away, and I'm making a prediction that she doesn't. Oh, you think she's still involved in all this? Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah. yeah, I think she's getting captured. Like, we didn't get any... Okay, yeah, yeah. You yeah. know what? I like it. Uh -huh. Captured by who? Like, by Perrin again? Yeah. Yep. And or, like, he... Perrin's group. Right. And then, like, Perrin gets back or something, and, and she's, be like, like, where's my captured. wife? <laughs> well... Okay. <laughs> yeah, okay. We'll get there, but okay, I don't okay. know. I'm just feeling... Yeah, I'm just know having a feeling like Where she's are you not, going with that? I don't think she's quite uh, as... Free as she thinks she is. Okay. Yeah, that's okay. all. That's all, right. all I'll say. I, I'll write it down in my notebook. Yeah. Also, for the record, the fog is not natural. It is not. Right. It was created by an Ashaman. Yeah. Kneeled. Yeah. Yep. But that just means that it's not going to burn away and the sun isn't going to blow it anywhere. It's yes. That, that's what that means. Yeah. And if you look at it too long, like you can probably tell it's not natural because like mm, it doesn't it's move. Weird. Yeah. Natural. Like, yeah. There's it's spooky. Spooky. Spooky fog. Yeah. Yeah. Right. All right. Well, basically, we're going to enter here with Perrin looking out on the entire thing, thinking that, oh, Fayol is down there. Yeah. So did you actually like look at the distances of everything? No. Okay. Not so, even remotely. Okay. So did we've you got, expect me to? Well, not really, but I no. wrote it down just in case. So mm -hmm, we've got thanks. Perrin and his group along the ridge line, And then there's a, there's a slope that's about 200 paces downwards. And then there's about 700 paces towards the Aiel tent. Okay. And then it's about a mile to the town. Sure. So just like for a frame of reference for how this battle plan is going to actually happen. Okay. Sure. Yeah. There you go. Okay. But the worst part of all of this is how sure Perrin is that Fael will be able to sneak away from her duties to go and be exactly where yeah. the Aes Sedai Told her she should be. Yeah, Galena, who he knows as Alice. Alice yeah. or something, Alice, yeah. yeah. So the issue with all of that is we're really, really, number one, trusting this Aes Sedai that she's actually going to go through with exactly what she said she was going to do. Totally. To the exact specifications that Perrin is thinking. Yeah. Because let's say, let's pretend she is actually Aes Sedai and can't lie. Like, they all got loopholes. Right. Right? So we're assuming they're going to do exactly what you've asked. Yeah. Okay? And number two, we're assuming that Fael, as a captive currently, can just sneak away from her laundry duties or something. Yeah, there's, and I mean, there's a lot of issues with it. But I mean, it's kind of funny because the amount of times we hear this chapter of Perrin thinking, and even Tam, once he shows up, Ooh, saying- spoiler alert. I uh, know, geez, right? If you read the That's chapter. That's a big deal. Yeah. yeah. But like, there's so many references to Perrin thinking, plans are only good enough until things start to happen because people do crazy things and plans don't go yeah, to plan. Yeah, but he's so sure about his own thoughts. I know. It's like, yeah. there's so many things that can go wrong here, here. 
but that's why it's not a blacksmith puzzle. Oh, yeah. It's right. not. It's not. I just love that little tidbit because <laughs> last time, Fahil was like, ah, this mangled thing of <laughs> debris pile debris <laughs> is a blacksmith's puzzle. Yeah. And then here Perrin is like, explaining not a that that's puzzle. exactly the opposite of a blacksmith's puzzle. <laughs> you don't understand what blacksmith puzzles you are, do you? You clearly don't get it, Fahil. You don't <laughs> yeah. even understand. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's <laughs> back to the Perrin thing, too. He even thinks here, like, oh, it'll be handy to have another Aes Sedai in the fortress because he's counting on Galena like being there. And it's like, no, nope. no, man, like oh, so no. many things are going to go wrong here. Cause yeah. like, we know they have to go wrong. Yeah. Okay. So Perrin goes down to the line to talk with some of the two rivers men here. And oh my gosh, do we get a list of who's here or do we get a list? Well, we get like of a, who's here. We get a little list here. We get a big list later. We get lots of lists. And another list. And then the other so list. So many lists. So many lists of names. We have so many exciting things about to happen. And we're going to waste our time with pages and pages of lists. Yeah. Of names yeah. of people I haven't heard of since like book four. Exactly. Oh, God. Since the whole two rivers thing. I know. Like, that's what <laughs> I'm saying. Like, that's literally the last time we saw this two rivers army yeah. and heard about what's happening with the two rivers. So let's, let's talk about the fun stuff, which is the ball we're coming to be like, hey, Masima's is here. Uh oh. Uh oh. Masima sucks. <laughs> yeah. He's not supposed to be here, but I guess he's here now. So. Yeah. Instead of being with his own army. Right. And Perrin is very concerned because his army is more like a ragtag bunch of criminals. Yeah. That's a, yep. But now we're going to get to talk to Masima. Yeah, but not yet because we got to do a couple other things first. Oh, right. Right. So number one, Perrin's like, call back those two spy guys who are spying on Masima. We actually heard about the Javier and oh, Marion. Okay. I missed that completely. That was like back in Crossroads. They were spying on Masima because they're like, oh, Masima is definitely like a bad guy. He might not be a bad guy, but he's a bad guy. Yeah. And then- I think Balwer, he's a bad guy. Probably. Like, he's he's a bad guy. And Bauer's like, okay, well, let's spy on him. And Perrin's like, ah, I don't like spying very much, but I guess so. That was kind of around the time that Masima was like, I'm not Masima. He's dead. And I've risen from the grave as the prophet. For oh, little, right. Crazy. Uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. He just like went full off the, okay. Yeah. So- they're pulling back, and then we get a little bit of comic relief for like a page and a half, two pages. With like Basil, Gill, and yeah. Lenny. Yep. Okay. L Lam, Lam Gwyn and Brienne. Okay. And they're like, we, we want to fight. fight. <laughs> His parents like- well, and Lenny's like, I'm not moving. I'm going to fight too. And Perrin's like, like you're just going to die Linny, then. you're like 90 years old. Yeah. <laughs> like, no. Although I appreciate her resolve. I do too. She wants- more gays back. Yeah, I get it. But also, Perrin actually does a... Pr I got to give props to Perrin here. He does a good leadership job. Well, he's like literally just going to like pick her up and plop her on a... But he doesn't necessarily yeah. just say no. He's like, ah, no, I need you to do your... Gil, you're my... You're my light. guy. You got to take care of all this. So you got to go. You got to do it. Linny, you got to go. Sorry. Yeah. And then I don't she know. Yeah, you're right. Yes. I think it's more forceful than that. It is. I don't think it's a wishy-washy Perrin. It's a no. This is your job. You're not useful here. You're leaving. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I'm trying to give I'm trying to give parents some credit for leadership abilities here. No, you are, but the way you just said that didn't give him credit, I thought. Oh, okay. I thought you going, whoa, whoa, whoa. Well, because like not he, he justifies it. He justifies it a little bit more than he sometimes does. No, I does. know, but he's quite firm. Yeah, but he justifies it. That's the point. That was the point I was trying to make. Okay. Because he doesn't always justify your impression. His... Yeah. Was flawed. <laughs> okay, that's right. Well, no, because Perrin doesn't always give a justification for his decisions. Yo, that's true. He's just like, no, this is the way it is. And it's like, mm -hmm. sometimes it helps to tell people why you're doing things. Right. And okay. Half the time he's like, ah, no time to explain. You're right. But we have so many other things we need to get to. So let's sure. keep going. Yeah, okay. So Sulin is here and she's going to find Perrin to report back. And she says that the Shido guards... Like the that lookouts. Are, that yeah. are to the north? Yeah. They're dead now. Right. So, so so they're sentries. So like lookouts, people who would be on guard for this giant approaching army, they've killed them. Ah. They've lost some maidens in the process. Ah. But the Aiel have their own theories about that. So. Yeah. 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 Now we have a whole thing with the Aes Sedai and Barrelane showing up. Yeah. And then we also have Aram here and he is so anxious to get fighting. Yeah. He's got he the typical eager. glower. Yeah. I, I, there's two thoughts that I really appreciate here. Number one, Perrin doesn't understand why Barrelane is all dressed up like the first of man would be. Right. It's like, dude, she's literally a queen of a nation. Uh-huh. And she's here leading her army. Yeah. That's why she's dressed up today. 
as the queen who's going into battle. Right. And he's like, don't get it. No time. Yeah. <laughs> and then Aram, Perrin thought about sending him off, but he's like, nah, he's just going to sneak back anyway. So right. No and point. I mean, if we're using him to fight anywhere, it should be here. Like, he clearly wants to just get fighting. He's wanted to do it. He's hot-headed, whatever. Sure. Send let him, him Send him in. Yeah, kill some Shido. I let, mean, him, this is... let him fight. Yeah, okay. Now it's finally Masima's turn to talk, and he's going to be like, <laughs> How can I offend I everyone? don't <laughs> want to work with these stupid women, and I don't want to work with these stupid Aiel. Yeah. Essentially, with much harsher words. Yeah, well, he's also like kind of angry that the wise ones have now learned how to heal. Oh. So that's actually like a little subplot that's happening here. And that the maidens, for example, are willing to accept healing as a thing, right? Because sometimes with the warrior people, and we've kind of seen this. Okay, with, yeah, like, like when it's when. Yeah, it's like, ooh, I'm not going to get healed. And Matt does it sometimes too, or is like, because he doesn't trust the power. Well, but... no. And I think with the Aiel, it might be more to do with honor. Exactly. Like if you get cut in battle, you just kind of have to deal with the fact that you were cut in battle. Exactly. Like things like that. Like right? the stakes are so much different when yeah. you can just be magically healed. So Masima is like, oh, they've learned healing and that's bad because you're using the power and only the lord dragon should use the power because he's the pro yeah. he's like the guy mm -hmm. but on the flip side the worst part about that is that it's gonna be harder to kill the savages because now they know how to heal hmm. right so it's like masim is just being the worst to everybody and offending everybody yeah he's terrible in one sentence and let me tell you when you're talking to masima and he's throwing out the lord dragon every single sentence it's pretty hard for perrin <laughs> not to picture Rand in a swirl of colors right. every three seconds. And every time he's like, ah, shove it away, shove it away. But Except in one, of those... one time. Yeah, yeah, you saw it? Okay. Oh, yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah. He's like, oh, my God, Rand doesn't have a hand. Yep. But then he's like, well, guess that's his problem. Yeah. <laughs> Where's my wife? Yeah. <laughs> it's like zero. <laughs> well, it's kind of the yeah. same mentality that Bashir and Rand had about it. A little bit. He's like, well, I guess what's done is done for can't, Rand. Well, you know what they say. Once your hand gets chopped off, you can't put your hand back on. Yeah. Okay. And I want to take a tiny, teeny, tiny detour. Sure. For just one second. About hands being chopped off? No, about this color swirling. Okay. Okay. So Back to that. It's, well, it's sort of about that. Sure. That's where my mind went. Sure. So I was thinking about the last chapter with Semarag sort of being Tuon. Sure. And showing herself as Tuon a little bit. Okay. It flickered, right? Yeah. And so we've already seen Rand think about Matt and the color swirled and he sees Matt with a small dark woman. Now, if it happens again for Rand, is he going to... No. Ooh, I like that. Is he going to see the, hey, I know that that's who Semarag was pretending to be. Right. Like I've seen her face before, but is it going to be like a, oh, her face is familiar. So familiar. Why do uh, I, I can't but it? But I got no time for that now. I'll think about it later when I have more time, which is never. Which is never. Yeah. So I feel like we're going to get a situation where he'll see Matt and Tuan and think, huh, she looks familiar. And then just like move on from it. I like Which it. Which is like more realistic probably yeah, yeah, yeah. than being like, oh my God, <laughs> that's the daughter of the nine moons with Matt. Like, that's the one. Yeah. Okay. I like that's it. That's who Semarag was pretending to be. And so I kind of had that thought at one point okay. in the last week. You know what? I'm going to I'm gonna put that away. Tuck that one away. Yeah. 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 I should write that one down too. You, should, you probably should. Okay. But now getting back to Perrin and Masima here. Perrin's just super annoyed that Masima abandoned his position because he doesn't think that the group of criminals that I mentioned before yeah. are even going to do what they're supposed to do with Masima not there. Oh, yeah. And I agree with you, but Masima is pretty confident. He's like, here. it's not my army. It's the <laughs> Lord Dragon's army. Also, don't worry. <laughs> they're like, they're super disciplined and they're going to fight to the last man. Yeah, it's gonna I go know. Good. Yeah. I know. I like, know. What? <laughs> but again, I mean, he's crazy, so. Mm-hmm. But okay, so that's that's good. It's kind of funny because there's some behind the scenes thoughts that Perrin is having too, that he is actually hoping that Masima and, and a bunch of the people, like most, basically all of them, he just hopes they get wiped off. Mm -hmm. like just, it reminds me of Rand's plan yeah. with those people he didn't quite trust, bringing them into battle with him. Because like worst case scenario, they die. They die and Best they're scenario, off my they plate. Die. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I think that Perrin had almost planned out 
yeah. how Masima could die here. But it's like kind of frustrating. Because he's like, with any luck, Masima won't be alive after today to worry about. Which is totally fair. That's a totally valid thing. But also, he's had ample opportunities. And Didn't basically, the I said I want him dead? The I said I want him dead. The wise ones want him dead. Everybody wants Masima dead because there there was like yeah. a little bit of a time frame where some of the I said I were like, no, no, we can use him. But now they're like, nope, he's a rabid dog. Like we should just put him down yeah. because he can't tame that kind of person. And then Perrin was very adamant. Like, like no, no, not because not I guess him. we have to bring him back to Rand. Rand meeting because and Rand's, Rand doesn't Rand, think about Masima. He doesn't at all. Zero percent. He thinks about Masima <laughs> as often as he thinks it's about Loyal <laughs> yes. and the way gates. Exactly. Which is it's, which twice. Is it was two times. It is 0.0% of the time. Okay. So anyways, yeah. we should have just killed them before, but now Definitely. we're kind of stuck in this. And- well, and now Masima is here and not leaving because he wants to stick close to Perrin. Oh, and I'm man. like, oh my God, does Masima want Perrin dead? And like the way he phrases it, oh, it would be terrible if anything happened to you right when you were saving your wife. Yeah. It's like. It's pretty nefarious. It's like the worst thing you yeah. can say. <laughs> if anything, be a shame if you're. <laughs> It'd be your a shame if you burned down. if you died. Yeah, right. That's how I sell business insurance. Yeah. Be a shame if your business burned down. <laughs> it's part of the mob. Oh my god. Okay. <laughs> okay. Well, all this is going to get interrupted by Neil coming up with a Shanshan officer with news from the Banner General Tai Li, which is the Shanshan yeah. General. And now it's a new officer, though. Yeah, I don't know if it's this time or if it's the time before. But when Perrin sees Neil looking real tired, yeah, he thinks to himself, "Ugh, why is he straining himself like this?" Yeah, he's got to save his stuff for later. I'm like, Perrin, because he's literally doing everything for you. Yeah. He's literally doing everything you've asked him to do. Yeah. And he's being a trooper about it. He's not complaining. He's like, I'll do what I got to do. Like, he's he's doing a good job of holding up, too. Yeah. But yeah, I think it's like here. I think it's both. It's it's all times. Yeah. It's any time Perrin sees him. (laughs) It's any time Perrin sees anybody. He has some contradictory thought about something. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Now- the report from the Raken scouts is that there are two bands of Aiel that are approaching Malden. Yeah, well, we knew that before. I know, but here's the report. They're actually moving a lot faster than we originally thought, right. and they'll likely arrive later today, maybe even by noon, and Perrin is like, don't worry, we'll be done this by noon. We're not changing any plans, even though everybody thinks we should. Yes, exactly. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because I think before we had like three days. Yeah. But now it's basically we've got no days. We've got none days. Yeah. We've got like maybe six hours. Okay. Mm-hmm. That's true. So that's why Tyler's like, hey, should we reposition some troops? Because like we got thousands of uh, of I and a lot of our a lot of them are guy shine from what it looks like. Mm. Of but there's still gonna be like thousands of warriors. So maybe we readjust. Maybe we well, shift. and we don't know what side they're on. We don't know if they're coming to join the Shido. Oh yeah, we got no clue. We have no. We idea. have no actual clue. But I mean, we could guess large group of Aiel with tons of guy shine. Probably not like Rand's Aiel. Probably no. Nope. But Perrin like, doesn't have confirmation of that. Of anything, really. Anyways. But yeah, let's take a quick break because that's where this perspective is going to end. Well, I mean, sort of. You missed the part where the wolves oh, start howling. Oh, the wolves howl. And then Perrin's like, it's it begins. begun. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Now now we can take a break. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Sounds good. Okay, so we're back. And just before we jump into this Fael perspective, I want to say... Something that I'm worried I'm going to forget to say later. That you're always right about the parent fail, parent fail. Oh, yeah, I am always right about that. But no, it's not about that. Okay. Everyone just assumes and knows I'm right Right. about that kind of thing. Except for all the stuff you said last episode about the Galena. That was all wrong. That's different. But about this, I'm right. Okay. Yeah. That's different. Yeah. Duh. What were you you going to (laughs) say? Sorry. (laughs) I was going to say I'm slightly confused about the people crawling through the aqueduct plan. Because I feel like I'm going to forget to say it later. This is why you should have looked at the map. Okay. Well, at the end of this perspective, I'm still thinking, what was the point of that? How are they going to help here? And then I was thinking, have they been just living in this wet sewer hole for two days? Because wasn't that like two days ago they went into the aqueduct? No. It was last night and now it's this morning. I thought it was going to take like two days for the fork route to get into the... I thought that was two days. No, it was like the morning. It was like they put it in and they're like, ah, by morning, we'll know. Really? Why did I think two days? I don't know. 
Okay, still. I'm not really sure. So just like now, I'm wondering. It's like, is it two days? Maybe they are living in the sewers. I don't know. It feels weird. I'm pretty sure I'm right. I might be wrong, but I think I'm I mostly right. think you're probably right. Okay, because they went in at night. Yeah. They start going, and then Perrin and them like travel back, and they're like, "Okay, it's go time. We're gonna wait." And then they did the fog thing. Like, not that much time has passed because mm. they're basically trying to poison the morning tea. Yeah. That's the plan. They put the forker in. The water comes down. Everybody drinks tea in the morning because they're Aiel. Okay. Hopefully all the wise ones are poisoned. Okay. Then they attack. Like, that's literally what we're seeing. There's no other. There, okay. There's not, like, it just feels like here. for we're us, we're spending a really long time yeah. in the aqueduct. Sure. Like, even to spend hours in there. Well, they have to walk a long way. Through, I know. It takes a long time. Yeah. Uh-huh. That's the thing. Got so if it. you look at the map of Malden, And are they going to come out and like attack from behind or so, something like that? No, there's not enough. There's not enough people. So here's the thing. The Shido are not in the city of Malden, really. I know that. Well, they're surrounding. They're, they're camped outside the city. Yes. The Perrin troops, they took the aqueduct into the city, but specifically so they can get into the fortress section, which is in the, in the north part of the city of Malden. Yeah. So the plan was for Galena to be on the inside, to get Fael to go to the fortress. Our aqueduct troops go into the fortress, collect Fael, keep them safe. While uh. Perrin and all the troops attack the Shido on the outside, they want to they want to have a small group on the inside to basically secure Fael, Magdin, Alejandra. Mm. But now I we've miss, got yeah, the, them trapped I under a that building. Part of the plan, yeah. They're yeah, just, no, they're I know just that like, part. They're, they're a I tiny little group here. The whole aqueduct yeah. crawling through it. And I just that's literally like an was... infiltration team okay. to secure our most important people. But now, right now, our most important people are trapped underneath the building in the south side, the opposite side of the city. Well, they're about to maybe not be trapped. So let's get into that. Let's talk about Fael's perspective. <laughs> yeah, okay, let's do that. Okay. Because remember, I was not feeling very positive about this plan. That's true. About the wave the flag scarf turns plan. out turns out it's it's half good turns out you know yeah better than nothing so yeah. now it is about the middle of the morning or midday yeah it's very we're not i'm not it's yeah it's hard to say because parents like we're gonna be done by noon but then we hear about the midday sun yeah and like last so, time we did hear file here like the wolves howling yes she and she's did. like ah i don't even think about parent this time but it's like, were those the wolves that were howling when Perrin just... Or is it different Different wolves, wolves same wolves, a I think it's bit. the same. Okay. I think that that's our timeline lineup. That's fair, too. Okay. So, Fael and the crew are still in the basement of the collapsed building. We don't quite know how long it's been, but it's been a while. Yeah. Because everyone's throats are dry from talking all morning, trying to keep Megden's spirits up, telling her she's doing such a great job. And honestly... Go Magden. Go oh, Morgan's yeah. because this is more channeling than she's literally ever done in her whole life. Probably the sum of her entire life. Her entire of channeling. life. The fact that she can even make this move as often as she is. Yeah. Is remarkable. I feel like she should try harder at channeling more yes, often. I know. It's like she just it never turns out you can do it. Turns out you can. It's okay. But while they're watching this scarf move. Yeah. And it's going like less and less kind of each time. She's getting pretty exhausted. Longer here. between each time. They're even getting tired saying, good job, Megan. Yeah. Right? <laughs> it's, uh... Yeah. So then somebody's face. Not just somebody. Pops you, up you from the this? street. Okay. Aravine. Mm -hmm. Okay. So she's the one who went to retrieve Fael when Savannah summoned her. The first time she was going to be punished for having the knife was when she was hogtied. So Aravine was the one who collected Fael and then first oh, brought her. Was she the first one to? She brought. Well, she... and I and I wasn't sure if I was going to trust her or not because it felt shady. Yeah, you didn't trust yeah, her. Yeah, I didn't, and I couldn't remember why. But she basically I showed can tell her. You why. She showed her the other people who were hogtied and was like, "This is basically going to happen to you." But then she pledged herself to Fael. And she was like one of the first basically who did that and like very openly. Yes. So you were a little bit suspicious very, there. Very, yes. It was weird is like a, hey, follow me down this back alley. And I was like, where are we going? Yeah, it was weird. Anyways, but I mean, she's here and she's literally. She's here and she yeah. says, I see her. They're alive. And when Fael manages to get up closer, she's like, oh, my gosh, how did you find us? Yeah. And it turns out Theral Frickin saved Theral. the day. The kid who also found the oath rod, who yep. got it, mm -hmm. has now saved them. Yeah, because apparently he followed Fael, despite being told not to. Yeah. He did it anyway. And when he saw Galena leave the building, uh -huh. 
and then saw that building collapse, he sat down and cried. And then he saw the scarf starting to move. So like how long was he sitting there crying? Because between the building collapsing and them deciding to try to start moving the scarf yeah. was a while. Yeah. Because they were trying to remove the rubble themselves for a while for a while yeah so like this story is very sweet and very cute but logistically i don't think it's supposed to be like a suspicious i think it's supposed no to be i'm not film. suspicious at all oh, i'm okay, just thinking good. like that's a long time to just sit down and cry he's man okay. he sits and cries because he thought like the person he yeah was gonna like rescue, res- she was supposed to rescue him and now it's like he doesn't have anything else to do i guess yeah and i mean like immediately running to get help no sit down cry for two hours he's a kid he's a and kid I- he's a child he's a child <laughs> Hey, idiot. Tough yeah. love it is. You should have went to get help immediately. <laughs> well, that's what I would do. Yeah. No, me as a kid, I was for sure the crier. No, oh, yeah. I just cried. I would have I was a kid who wouldn't have crying. disobeyed and I wouldn't have followed her because oh, I got told not to. That's true. You yeah, were. That's yes. Me. <laughs> yeah, that is you. You're right. You would have been no help. No help at all. Okay. So in any case, don't think too hard about it. He saw the scarf moving and then he ran to get help. But wait, there's more. (laughs) Yeah, because turns out he saw Galena pull on a timber. Right. That was set like a lever and she made the building collapse. Oh, man. I can't believe it. Alejandro is the most shocked by this news. I know. It's really funny because like I literally said that like last time. I was like, what if she just pushed because you're like the channeling thing. I I really wanted it to be a channeling thing. I know. It's pretty funny. Is it is it funny? Yeah, it's also funny because you already said it, but Alejandro being like, what? Yeah. <laughs> it's like, Come on. Well, and then Fail is like, oh, I knew I shouldn't have slapped her. No. And it's like long before. Way before. Long before the slap. Oh, long before the slap. And she's like, oh, I wonder because she definitely told me that she was going to save me. So could she be the Black Aja? Like, or is she just mad at me that I slapped her? That one. Yeah. Yep, it's that one. She's mad at you. It's like yep. she's so close. She's so close. Right. Right? But then... But wait, there's more. <laughs> yeah, because Aravine isn't the only one here. Right. Roland. It's Roland. Roland's yeah, it's here. Good. And he's like, well, actually, we're getting I don't know out. if I want to say it's good because, like, well, how do you feel about this? Um, I want them to get out and I want help. Okay. I want them to get out. Yeah. Yep. Okay. And I will accept the scarf moving. Yeah. As they save themselves. Well, I was going to say, I'll also accept the fact that Fail has amassed a following of hundreds of people who trust and believe in her, yes. including I know. Ail. I know. Last time, I was talking about how impressive she is as a yeah. leader. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Like, even if it is the, like, Roland and the brother listen, the Ail get her out, that's still her relationship building. Absolutely, So, like, she yeah. gets points no matter what happens. Yeah, yeah. Except if she gets crushed by the building, then she loses points. Because she's dead. Because she can't. Well, <laughs> that too. Well, but yeah, also, and you also shouldn't have gone into the basement with Galena. The murder so basement. you definitely lost points lost there. Lost point, yeah, exactly. Lost points you there for it. sure. You get it, okay. Okay, so- Roland's here. Yeah, Roland's here. He's like, get out of the way. We're moving stuff so you can get out. And then he's like, you better listen to me or I'm going to smack your bottom and then we'll play a kissing game. Right. And she's like, okay. Yeah. <laughs> she's oh, like, man. if it means getting out of here, Perrin doesn't have to know. Yeah, well, because yeah. I was actually going to think, was like, ask you about this because she, she thinks- I'll do whatever is necessary to convince Roland to let me go after this too. Yeah. Perrin doesn't need to know. Yep. It's you know what? If it if you're gonna if you're gonna escape, like escape your kidnappers. Do what you gotta do. Yeah. Yep. I can only imagine how unhealthy their relationship will be after that. Well, you know, he Perrin doesn't need to know. Oh, but he will. Well, maybe. He will find out. Maybe. She will for sure tell him. Do you think Fahil's capable of keeping a secret from Perrin? She's going to yes. shout everything right at his face. Only in a moment of anger. Oh, yeah. No, she's definitely going to tell him. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, only if she gets mad yeah. enough to. And, and she I'm never all gets for it. Mad. I'm like, yeah. Frick, save yourself. Yeah. If you need to. Yeah. Where were you, Perrin? It took you 50 something days. Oh, like, come on, oh man. Oh, my God. Jeez. Way too long. What are you waiting for? Okay. So the plan is. They're still going to try to leave today, even though their plan was a little bit messed up. So right. they start moving the logs, and that's where we're going to end the perspective. Yeah, okay. All right, so we're going to flip. We flipped, we flopped. Now we're flipping back to Perrin. Here we go. And now it's mid-morning. Not the middle of the morning. It's mid-morning. Mid-morning. So it's some. It's the time. It's adv- maybe advanced, maybe not. It's okay, mid-morning. And now Galen and Arganda are here and they're bickering at each other because they are Barrelane's. Yeah, so Galen is Barrelane's guy. Okay. 
And he wants to just kill Masima because he's a threat to Barrelane because yes. the whole like Masima was like, I want to kill everybody. Yes. That whole deal. Uh, yes. And totally accurate and fair. Yeah. But Galen is also like, hey, Masima's has only got like 200 guys here. Let's just murder him right now. It's a good idea. I think so too. Well, Arganda has a good point because he's Aleandra's guy who, and Aleandra is not safe. She's in the Shadow Camp. And he's like, no, because killing 200 people is going to cause a bunch of noise. Mm. And we are literally trying to sneak up on the Shadow. I know. I think we need to figure out what's more important here. You should have killed Masima and his guys a long time ago. A long ago. time ago. I know. But With now we have channelers. this opportunity. Yeah. You have channelers. Mm-hmm. You should have killed. You should have killed him. You should have kidnapped him. When you first met him. Oh, yeah. Uh-huh. We had options. Yeah, lots of them. Anyways. Nope, we're not doing any of that because parents like, no, don't kill him. Ah, fine. All right. Now, some interesting news that I did not see coming. Yeah, I like this. Grady shows up via gateway. And is this guy the one who's tired? Are they all tired? They're all, they're both tired. They're both tired. Yeah. Okay. And he's here to deliver... Tam Al Thor. Right. Who's looking a little bit older since the last time parents saw him. He's like full gray. A little bit more gray, not just at the temples. Yeah, every it's yep. Oh, okay. All gray. Understandable. And now what's interesting is Perrin thinks that maybe we should just leave the gateway to the two rivers tied off. Right. So that when we do get Fayil, we can just run right through because we're really concerned that these Ashermen are not going to be able to make a gateway when it counts. Yeah. Because we're so tired. But also that's a bad plan. Terrible plan. You're like two miles away from the town. And they can and, all just start running through. And you don't know where Fayil is. Yeah. Even if you run around being like, where's the most beautiful woman in this Oh my God. This You'll city? know. You'll she's know so her. hot. Yeah. She's the most hottest. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know her, man. <laughs> yeah. Although, if you ask Roland. It's Roland. Roland? Did I put a D on there? If you ask that guy, he'll be like, ah, yes, Fail, I know her. Right. Mm -hmm. I like that. <laughs> Parent and her Roland. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know where my wife is? <laughs> yeah. Who's your wife? The most hottest woman. He's oh, like, yes. oh, yeah. I know she's, her. She's over here. Yeah. <laughs> she's under this building. <laughs> oh, man. Okay. Back on track. Back on track. Tam's here. That's mm. what we're talking about. Also- I feel like the fog is for dramatic effect and like they can't even see their own people right now. Yeah. Or is the idea to hide how many people they have? Yeah. All of it? Yeah. Okay. Because like it's an inconvenience that they can't even see each other. Yeah. Yeah. It's. Okay. Strategic and. Inconvenient. And and dramatic. And dramatic. Yeah. It's all those things. Uh -huh. All wrapped into one. I can't make an argument that it's not dramatic. And it's no, not it just is. for the drama. Okay. Yeah. Hmm. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, okay. It's a pretty cool effect, though. Okay, but Tam's here. Right, okay, back Don't to forget. it. Tam's, Tam's Tam here. Tam okay. is here. Yeah. And this now- is actually, This is actually pretty, hard, like, heartfelt. Mm, I, this is- It's heartfelt, except that Perrin has no time- right. for heartfelt emotions with Tam. So much, though, that he doesn't really answer the question. No. Okay, but well, it's not even really a question. No. So- And also, are we just assuming Tam has never heard a prophecy of the dragon before? Okay, well, here's the thing. I, I could make like an argument. Like, you literally saved a baby on Dragon Mount. Here's the thing. I could make a very strong argument. We're not going to do now. We don't have time. I, I can make a very strong argument that Tam has always known exactly who Rand is. Yes. But I'm not going to do that right now. Okay. But I could, but I'm not going to. Not going to. Anyways. I assume that this he is, knew, knows who he is. This is the first time that we can see, at least, that Tam is getting at least a hint of a confirmation from someone he trusts and respects that what he thought is in fact true. Okay. Because he's like, hey, tells a little story time. Mazram Taim and Samashaman visited the two rivers, scooped a bun bunch of men up, went to the Black Tower, and then Taim said that Rand sent him and that Rand is the dragon reborn. And then Perrin does his whole, like, he smells people's emotions, but he's not very good at translating those emotions always no, into, like, until real things. No, understanding why someone might exactly. be smelling the way they smell. Yeah. All he can do is smell the emotion. Yeah, and he's like, yeah. oh, is he, like, a little bit sad or in, like, is he in denial? It's like, what is it? It's like, no, yeah. man, he's like, he's asking for, for confirmation from you. Yeah. It's kind of weird because, like, you know... He's like, is it true? Is it true? Is Rand the dragon reborn? Like, I want to hear it from your words. Yeah. Like, your your mouth here. Is it true? And Perrin's like- Nothing we can do about it now. Can't do anything. And it's like, that's, yeah. like, that's, that's not, not really what he's asking, but yeah. okay. Okay. Yeah. But it is kind of funny, too. So I want to do a little bit of a callback here for you. Okay. So back in Path of Daggers, Rand was reading a letter from Taim, 
and it was about a status update on Blackberry the Black Tower. Blackberry bushes. Exactly. We I remember. Whole, we had a whole conversation about it because- I like when I remember weird random things. That's great because yeah. there was like a secretive phrase because there was like a count of all the Ashaman and, you know, dedicated and soldiers, whatever, whatever. But the secret phrase was, I harvested that Blackberry bush myself, a small bush and thorny, but a surprising number of berries for the size. And we kind of talked about what was like, was that Tarvalin? Was that like a secret mission mm. to Charlotte Island or was that like the two, two rivers? rivers? Yeah. But then later on in Winter's Heart, we had one of the Ashaman, Andral, reporting on some details of like the new type of healing. But then in that conversation, it was a little bit buried. But uh, some of the other Ashaman were like, oh, the dragon doesn't even care about the two rivers. And like he doesn't pay attention to it. But we heard that the Lord Dragon himself told the Mahale to pluck up anything male in the two rivers that could channel down to the roosters. So it Ooh. is clear that Rand specifically sent time to go harvest the two rivers. And Tam talks about how the village council tried to do their best. Oh, they to, like, hated it. They stopped. Yeah. They, they shut it off. So Tam's like, oh, they got about 40 people from the area. But if we hadn't stopped them, there would have been like 400 from oh, the area. Oh, crap. Like 10 times yeah. the amount that would have went. Not necessarily channelers, but would have left. Gone. And gone. Yeah. So it's kind of crazy. Like. Small blackberry bush, but thorny. E. So it's kind of fun little callback there. And a bountiful harvest. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Surprising number of berries. Is that what it was? Yeah. <laughs> Interesting. Okay. Well, I'm happy. I'm happy to see Tam. Yeah. Also, where's Abel? Yeah. Probably taking care of the two rivers. Oh. Uh, mm. I would have to assume. I guess someone should. Yeah. Someone should stay. Someone should do that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. And then we get this kind of weird situation with Galen and Arganda and them being introduced to Tam. As Perrin's first captain, who will lead the attack plan. Yeah. And they're like, not really. No, I'm well, not also, listening to him. It's like, not my first cat. It's like, if it's yours, yeah. then that's fine. But also, I mean, like, we know a little bit of backstory on Tam. And yes. Tam's not impressed by these guys. No. He's been around the block. Yes, he has. So. Now, Tam agrees that this plan is as good as any plan, at least until the battle actually starts. Because we know that anything can happen. Right. But here we go. And... That's actually when I'm a little bit worried because if Tam is like, yeah, this plan's okay. It's not like, like a like Matt Coffin plan. No, that's what I was thinking. Yeah. This isn't like phenomenal. This is actually probably kind of stupid. Yeah. Which I mean, it's, it's yeah. you're really counting on a lot of stuff. Yeah. To go right. And we already know things have gone and wrong. And we already know. Like we know. We know things have gone wrong. Like all the internal stuff. Yeah. Of Fael specifically, that's all I know. Going horribly and wrong. the fact that Perrin keeps thinking, oh, so many things can go wrong, except exactly I know where Fael's going to be. And it's like, nope. Yeah, not that. Mm -mm. Not that. Mm -mm -mm. But I did say last time that Perrin himself will go roam those streets if he has to. Oh, for sure. I said that. And yeah. so I'm finding it interesting that it wasn't Perrin who found Fael in the broken building. Okay, okay. Because I sort of said that last time. Yet. There's still time, we think. It's only mid-morning. Who knows? Uh, yeah, I we actually have no idea. You're right. I actually don't know. <laughs> yeah. We have at least hour until it's noon. At least hour? <laughs> yeah. One hour, probably? Maybe. I don't know what time it is Who's exactly. It's mid-morning. It might be 10 o'clock. Okay. It might be 9 o'clock. So we get a bird call. Yeah. It's a fake bird call. It's one of those two rivers. Like, yeah, no, we got it. Look out, Shido are coming, very calls. Warning, warning. Warning, warning. Danger, danger. Okay, so a raiding party of about 400 Shido are heading out of the camp, probably to see what all this weird fog is about. Maybe. They're not specifically coming on, like, on the attack. No. Because they're all just walking with their veils down right now. That's right. So. But they are heading straight towards Perrin. Right. And at the very top of this chapter, Perrin was standing out where he could be seen, thinking... It's stupid for me to be standing here because someone could see me. Right. But I really needed to look. Yeah. He doesn't take out a looking glass because he's like, that would be too much because of the metal glint or something like you that. You get it, yes. But I'm sure he was seen. Maybe. A hundred percent. Probably. Are these are Aiel. Yeah. Like, yeah, they're Shido, but like, they're Aiel. They're still they Aiel. They for sure saw The you. worst Shido is still better than the- Well, like <laughs> and like all this weird fog is all of a sudden here. Super weird. They're watching it. We're the, like, where that, that's weird fog, man. It's weird fog. I don't fog. know. Yeah. Should go check that out. Right. Anyways, time for the attack plan. Okay. Do the thing. 
Go ahead. Tell us about the thing. No, you tell. Well, okay. Well, he takes off the cloak pin first that Fael gave it. Puts, puts it in his, his pocket. pocket. Oh, you're going to do way too many I details. have to assume I'm there's no zipper this. on this pocket. Never mind. I'm going to do this. It's going to fall. It's going to fall out of your pocket, man. Okay. There's no way this pocket is deep enough for this cloak pin. Do Anyways. you also want to talk about how he takes off his cloak and hangs it on a branch? Sure. And we'll come back for it later? Yeah. That's all I want to do about that. And okay. then he walks out of the fog with no. Aaron right behind him. You missed the whole point about the last knot. Oh, my God. <laughs> That's the important part. <laughs> so he pulls it out the so leather coat. to get to something. <laughs> it's got like, what, 54 knots? I think it was. It's a long ass so, cord. I don't understand. How, like, what is the huge? Is it really thin leather? Yeah. Because if it's thick leather. It's one leather strip. And I bet he's tying more leather onto it in a knot. Maybe. And then little bits adding of knots and then adding more. Seems crazy, man. I don't know. Must be. He takes out this giant wad of leather <laughs> and thinks it's actually kind of heartfelt. You know, I'm trying not to make too light of it, but. Well, this is my whole this is the preemptive, last man. Yeah. Very preemptive. Drops it on the ground. He's like, I don't need this anymore. I'm never going to make another knot. Counting yeah. days, Fahil's gone again. And I'm like, okay. Yeah. I still think there's probably going to be more days. We'll see. If there's one more. He's not doing He's not doing it anymore. Okay. Which is fine. That's don't fine. Don't do it anymore, yeah. but don't be so confident. Yeah. Okay. All right. So and, then he strolls out of the fog. And I got to say, like, cinematically, this is a badass scene. Like, spooky fog everywhere. And Perrin saunters out. With Aram right behind him. Yeah. And it's like the raiding party of a heel. <laughs> they don't know what's behind this, you know, fog. Wall Huge fog, army waiting. Yeah. It's pretty it's a pretty cool scene. It's a weird situation okay. to make the group stop and watch. <laughs> yeah, because they're like, okay. And then halfway down the slope, Perrin stops. Right, because there's two hundred paces of slope. Plants himself, yeah. tells Arm to do the same. And then the shadow starts toward Perrin again. Yeah, they start moving. They're still not veiled though. No, because they're like two two guys, right? Yeah. And at the sound of boots and hooves behind him. Again, visually super cool. Yeah. Perrin oh. looks over his shoulder and sees Arganda and those soldiers. Yeah, like the Gildan. All in, appearing out of the fog. All the manners, all the two rivers bowmen. And then we got Masima. We, <laughs> we got the maidens. Like we got everybody. Yep. The wise ones. The Like we all emerge from the fog. It's pretty cool. Yeah. Except our maidens have a long strip of red around their arm. Yes. Even though they didn't want to do it. Yeah, we big have one. to be able big to one. we have to be able to tell our maidens apart. Which is totally fair. From the other maidens. Like you're dressed in basically like we yeah. already covered that the aisle definitely well, probably and you have different cover uniform. your that, face yeah. up to your eyes. And like I don't I can't tell the faces of people in battle. Yeah. And you're all dressed the same. And even if I could, your faces are covered. Yeah. Yeah. Anyways. It's a good idea. It's smart. We've seen that before. We saw that at Dumai's Wells and stuff. Yes. Like, that's a good strategy to do. All right. So, then a wise one comes up to Perrin and says, it's going to begin soon. And that is where we will take a very quick break. Right before the fight scene. Right before. That's okay. right. Okay. So, we're back. And it turns out that seeing a couple thousand soldiers appear out of a wall of fog puts the Shido a little on edge. Which is fair, and not just spooky fog. Not just spooky. Hidden hidden army fog? Hidden army fog, yeah, okay. yes. Yep. And so they pull their veils up, and more from the camp have seen what's going on, and they start running to join the attack. Makes sense. So now Tam is on the slope, and he's in the process of directing the bowmen, and... Then we get a page yeah, this is, of names. This, this is, is the, the big list. thing. This, this is the big list. Yeah, I do want to point out here. So he does go through a lot of the names, but I appreciate that there's basically someone from like every family that Perrin knows of in the Two Rivers. But then he also thinks like, oh, there's a bunch of people like I have no idea who these people are, but it's because they're all the foreigners who migrated to the Two Rivers and they've come to fight on behalf of the two rivers too. Right. It's actually really it gave them a new home. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. So they're like, this is, you know, you're our people and we're going to come and we're going to fight for you. So yeah. cool. Let's do it. Okay. And then this is when the Shido start beating their spears rhythmically against their shields. And Tam says, after the Aiel war, I hoped to never hear that again. I bet. And then Perrin's like, 
Give the commands. Yeah, let's we go. We don't have time for your sentimental bullshit, or Tam. Your, or your PTSD, your war trauma. We can't. We can't deal with that <laughs> right now. Tam fought in the heel war. Can't do it. No. <laughs> it's like, and that's that's such a cool sentence. There's like, I wish we had Tam backstory. Yes, like, I know. One of the books that could have been know. written. Could have been. Could have been. Okay. Could have been, would have right. been. Yeah. Anyways, Adara, right. so the wise one, that's the one. Who's like basically doing all the talking for the wise of yeah, right now? Yeah, she says soon we'll know if it worked. Yeah. referring to the fork root tea plan. <laughs> are they all po- are they all like unconscious right now, or, are or we unable get- to channel? Or That's are we really... going to get murked by like four hundred channelers? Exactly. Right now? So Tam starts calling the orders to get ready to fire, and Perrin can see some of the Shido breaking off to move to the side in like a flanking position or something. Yeah. So basically, like, you want to surround your enemies. Yeah. Easier to kill them that way. Perrin starts to see fireballs arching from the Shido tents towards them, but they're exploding harmlessly overhead. Yeah. Which feels weird. Well, okay. So we have, well, we kind of get the explanation from Adara. So she's like, hey, there's only about probably 15, 20 channelers who escaped the fork route. So basically, the fork From plan, what we can tell right now. Yeah. because That's she's, all that's channeling. If they had more who could there's channel. Only, there's only nine channeling. Oh, yeah. Okay. So she's expecting that there's some still in the camp who might be moving forward. But she's like, I can only see nine channels. Like, that's all I can tell right now. There's only nine people channeling. So we basically have a face off of the Shido wise ones facing off against like our wise ones and our Aes Sedai. So it's a defensive. It's like wise one versus wise one. Okay. Versus I said I. Got and it. We're winning. Because there's also the... like lightning striking down, but it's like getting yeah. cut off. Because we're not letting it. They're like oh, clearly doing like a little channeling magically. battle. Yeah, Got exactly. It. Magic okay, battle. Okay. Okay. And that happens with the Damani too in a little bit here. Okay. So yay for the fork root tea plan. Yeah, it seems seems it worked. Okay. Yeah. So Missouri and Anura both feel that they're in danger, and they're like, "We got a channel," and then. They're basically told, no, they have to wait. Yeah, wait a little bit longer. Like, not time yet. Yeah. And then this is where we get the battle songs starting to be sung by the Shido. Yeah, because they're, like, starting to trot towards the hill while they're singing their songs. So, yeah. And yeah. now the singing is getting louder as the Shido approach. And they're about halfway to the ridge now. And then Tam calls for the archer to fire. And the parent's like, no, it's too soon. Yeah. And then he's like, oh, no, wait. Tam oh, knows Tam, what he's Tam's doing. Like, it's like, yeah, man. Like, yeah. trust. Like, Tam, Tam's the, you can, you can trust him. <laughs> he knows what he's doing. Yeah. Because it's like, oh, I didn't, I didn't account for, for the, the elevation. elevation. Oh, I hate that. And it's like, of course. Yeah. Of course, idiot. Why you let your seasoned commanders do the commanding. That's right. So then we get waves and waves of arrows crashing down on the Shido, but they keep coming and they get in range and then they start firing their own arrows back and it's now we're well parent gets now like we're hit in, in the arm it yeah. grazes them it's like this is we should do something about that mm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. like i don't know one of those air air walls or oh, something. oh more shields you know just around parent though like why just parent at this point well, I mean, number one, he's literally Taviran, so like maybe protect your most important. I think thing. that the pattern will protect him. Okay, number two, you could like protect everybody. Use some of your channelers and just like big wall of. Uh, no, we have to use them for other things. But, okay, uh, all right. Okay, you know, so, so now it's not quite as good as Matt's strategy, where like he wiped out all the bad guys with like two waves of crossbow bolts. No, not the same. But they're, Although, they're doing a pretty good job so far. Let's get that information into our pals' hands. Right. You know. No, keep it for yourself. Okay. Well, <laughs> you know, FaceTime. Okay. Okay. Now, Perrin suddenly hears the sound of the Shanshan horns off to the north and south, and he sees the ground erupting all around the Shido yeah. because this is Damani work. Oh, yeah. Here we go. And it's kind of interesting because, like, the Damani completely outclass the wise ones with, when it comes to, like, channeling in a battle. Yes. And Perrin even That's thinks what that, they do. They, that is literally the thing that they do. And it is interesting, too, because the wise ones. We got to see kind of the evolution of the wise ones channeling in battles because beforehand it's like they didn't do it. Not even at all. Wise ones could walk through the middle of a heated Aiel battle and be totally one hundred percent safe. Yeah. And now and they, they would never channel in battle. Never. And now it's like literally the first thing. Well they thing would they barely do. ever channel ever. Exactly. Like channeling was just like such a secondary thing. Yeah. They like literally never did it. It's like not as important. But now, yeah. like even from the shadow side, like first thing they do is they channel. Mm-hmm. It's just interesting to see that. So the channelers from the shadow camp are attacking the tree line where the Damani are, but there's like no effect. They're doing nothing. Same thing. Yeah. 
Yeah. And then it's time for the wise ones in the Aes Sedai to start attacking the Shido line with Perrin. Yeah. And that part's pretty devastating. There's like body parts everywhere and it's like pretty gruesome. Yeah. And the whole time the two river soldiers are just firing arrows down on the Shido. Yeah. And you got to assume that there's like a constant stream coming out of the Shido camp. So like we're doing something. Yes. And then then it's go time. It's now a it's whole go thing. time. Yeah. It's well, it's a go time for Perrin. For Perrin, yeah. Even though he's not supposed to go. Right. Quite yet. Yeah, cuz Tam's like, "Okay, now we move forward With and we're the attack." S- yeah, we're supposed to go to walk. Right. But then Perrin was like, he just starts freaking like, sprinting. Well, okay, he, he walk, but then he trots. faster, faster, trotting, and then he's running. Like, okay, yeah, then he's and then Aram <laughs> is running beside him, and then they're literally fighting hand to hand combat with Shido and killing Aiel left and right. Perrin's like smashing guys with his big hammer. Oh, sm- crunching bone. Oh man. Oh, it's so graphic. Pretty brutal. And then parents only thought is like i got to get to fail right i gotta go i gotta go well and he's thinking like there's nothing is gonna stop him and that could either be like a really good thing because like let's go get fail finally or it's a very very bad thing where it's like lots of people are gonna die and we're not gonna get fi- like i don't yeah. know like, what are we thinking here mm-hmm, mm-hmm. what are what are you thinking here mm-hmm, mm-hmm. what am i thinking both some of both we get fail but lots of people die Probably. <laughs> okay. <laughs> oh, man. Okay, who's getting out of this conflict? Yeah. Or who's th- not? Right, right. Because I asked you a while ago, like, I know. who's going to die, I haven't, anyone. like, processed it enough. You sh- you've had time to process uh. this whole file kidnapping thing. No, the file kidnapping thing? Seems like oh, my God, I've here. had too much time yeah. to process that. It's been but seven n- years. <laughs> I know. But now that we're here... yeah. It's hard to say because I don't exactly know timeline and what that's going to look like. Okay. Because it might be that Fail and Alejandra and Morgays get out. Sure. But like the other side of the town, I don't know. If they know there's fighting going on, yeah. Fail will know it's parent. For sure. You know what I mean? Because of the wolves and like, yeah, yeah. so she's not just going to like take off. And be like, <laughs> I don't know who that is. Bye. Who's this mysterious force? I'm going to use this as a distraction and like leave. Sure. I don't, I don't know. Like we got a lot of big people here. We I got, really, like, I feel like at this point we just need a win. We need Perrin and Fail to be reunited somehow. And, and Big names. Yeah. Big names. And we got a couple of them. We got like, you know, Perrin, Barrelane. We got Fail, Alejandra, yeah. Megden. We've got like yeah. the Basil Gills. I and don't see any of our dying. main characters really Masima. dying. Masima. Maybe Masima. Think, maybe okay. Galena. Okay. Ma- like, Galena, I feel yeah. like, yeah. like I just, I'm bad at predictions right now because sure. I just want a win. <laughs> it's been so long since we got a win. Like we just yeah. had, we had Matt getting a win right after we got Rand getting a loss. Right. And those are the two biggest things, really, that have happened this book. Yeah. And then we had all Crossroads of Twilight where nobody won anything. So it's been so long since we had something actually go, like, very well. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, even Egwene is using this capture to the best of her abilities. Sure. But... Is this a is that a win? It's, con- it's starting to concern no me. idea what's happening with Elaine. It's concerning me that you're thinking we're gonna get a lot of wins. <laughs> uh, no. like, I don't want a lot, know. Kate. I don't want a lot of wins. Sure. Just it's concerning me that you want we, one win. You know, <laughs> it's like when you cheer for a sports team. Yeah. And that sports team is just always losing. Right. It right. feels bad. Right. It's not good. Okay. It's not fun. So, <laughs> like, even a one. Uh, give me a one win. You okay. know what I mean? Maybe we can pull that out. Now I'm worried people are going to die that I don't want to die. <laughs> that you never even suspected. I'm worried. Okay. I, I'm worried. Yeah. I was feeling hopeful and excited, and now I'm just worried. <laughs> so, yeah. Okay. Yeah. I want Masima to die, and I want Galena to be captured. Cool. May all your dreams be dreams. <laughs> okay. Time to end it. You got to go read. I know. One chapter. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yep. Yep. I will do that. All right. So before you go and use fog as a very dramatic battle tactic, I'm going to say that this is part of the pattern now. Yeah, it's part of the pattern. 
Well, that's it for us tonight. Thanks so much for listening, everyone. The Wheel Weaves is hosted and edited by Danny and Brett and produced by Danny and Brett with Passion Socks, Cody Fouts, Benjamin, Michelle O'Brien, Jamie Young, Megan Smiley, Jared Berg, Ricky Morissette, Lance Barden, Charlie Haz, Adam, Marta Thier, Michelle Forbes, MKM, Antoine Benoit, Lawrence Bradley, Eric Reed, Colby T, and Gabby Young with music by Audio Nautics. Be sure to check out our Patreon page if you're interested in supporting us on the podcast. We'd love to send you some Patreon-exclusive merchandise as a thank you, plus you'll gain access to our episodes earlier than everyone else. And at the time of recording, we have over 45 bonus episodes for your listening pleasure. Find all that and more at patreon.com slash thewheelweavespodcast. For general information about our show and information like how to send us shot glasses, how to join the Discord, or how to get in touch with us, visit thewheelweavespodcast.com. And as always, please be sure to give us a five-star review because it really does make a really huge difference in helping other people find us. And tell a friend, Riyadh, because referrals really are the best compliment. Thanks so much for listening. This really is part of the pattern now.